You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up, everybody? You are watching slash listening slash definitely enjoying the Command Zone podcast. I'm one of your hosts today, Jimmy Wong, and I'm joined by... Ashlyn Rose! What's up, everyone? Hello, Ashlyn. How have you been recently? Haven't seen... We haven't done a podcast together in a while, like a full thing. This is cool. Yeah, it's been a minute. I'm, I am great, actually. Life is good, and I am excited to be here. I have blue hair now. Yeah, so. and we're talking about a deck with blue in it. Yeah. That's right. It's pre-con upgrade time, our favorite time of the year. Now happens five, eight, 20 billion times a year. A lot. Uh, but we're in. We're on the streets of New Capenna, and we're talking about Obscura Operation. Obscura, that is the deck with the colors of white, blue, and black. And it's very excited. We're going to take 10 cards out, put 10 cards in, under $30, keeping it budget so that you can, most importantly, buy this deck, go out, sleeve it up, put these cards in, and have a great time at, you know, a lot of Commander Nights. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, you know, some decks will be more powerful out there, but this is helping you get towards that level and actually stand a chance and have some fun. But first, before we get into it, got to talk about our sponsors. And who are they? Channelfireball.com slash command. Channel Fireball has uh, an amazing marketplace that are that's filled with local game stores. LGS is across the country. They are WPN certified and all that stuff. It may be even a game store that you go to, but now you can buy from them online because, of course, that's a great way for a lot of businesses to stay afloat yeah. during these crazy times so support a local game store go and use the channel fireball marketplace because you're going to buy magic cards anyway why not support a game store and get a great price know you're going to get great service because you're working with a real legitimate business at the other end of it not to mention they also got sealed product and we got new capenna we have unlimited uh is it called no it's not called unlimited it's called infinity oh yeah the new one infinity infinity and beyond yeah. uh and those have some beautiful lands in it i'm really excited oh so gosh. make sure you check out channelfireball.com slash command for your pre-orders and all of your magic needs of course also if you're going to pick up this deck perfect place to do it yes. big thanks also to the ultra pro who make our play mats that we sell on kickstarter they also make just at probably every play mat you've played on most Pretty all much, of them yeah and they are the standard and that's why we trust them to protect our magic cards we put our play mats in their play mat tubes we use their deck boxes we put our cards into their sleeves i use their art sleeves all the time i have uh eclipse sleeves that i've been using for five plus years now wow. The same ones. Now, I haven't drafted as much with them recently, but they're amazing. They're just workhorses for specific things like that. But they also make 100 card sleeves for your commander deck. So Ultra Pro, the place to go. You can also just buy it at your local game store and support them in yep. two ways and us at the same time. Amazing. And finally, direct way to support the show is patreon.com slash command zone. Our Patreon is amazing. We just revamped it. There are now chances for you to play with the command zone staff on spell table. Uh, hello. You want to sign up and support the show and, and, and just show us that you, you know, want to support us directly. You've enjoyed our content over the years. You can do it for as low as $5 a month and you're open to tons of cool things, including game nights auditions, which may or may not still be happening yeah. by this episode. Um, but that's just one of the many perks. We have an amazing discord and all that. And we shout out one lucky patron every episode. So this episode is dedicated to... <laughs> Ben, ben Randall. Randall. We choose these randomly, but Ben Randall joined actually super recently, I believe, after the revamp. So, oh, Ben, wow. you, rock. you rock. Yeah, and we also have our, we just launched a merch store yes. not too long ago. Not too long ago. Check it out. We have a hat, a t-shirt, and an amazing sticker pack. You are going so to good. want to slap that salty or the spicy sticker on something guaranteed. Uh, I can't wait to get mine in the mail, but make sure you check it out. Uh, store, I believe, or shop.commandzone.com. Yeah, it's in the notes. It's in the notes. It's, it's in the, show in the notes. description, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get right into it. The Obscura <laughs> Operation Precon Budget Upgrade Guide. 10 cards in, 10 cards out, $30 total. And of course, we do a nice little coverage of the whole deck. And the first thing we always do is talk about the brand new commander options. Yeah. Woo! So Ashlyn, lead it off. Tell us who the front card of the deck is. The one and only. All right. On the front, we have Kamiz Obscura Oculus. Ooh. It's a one colorless, a white, blue, and a black. It's a legendary creature, Cephalid Rogue, 2-4. Mm. Uh, and it says, when you... Whenever you attack, target attacking creature can't be blocked this turn. It connives. Then choose another attacking creature with less power, lesser power, whatever. <laughs> that creature gains double strike until end of turn. Whoa, okay. And conniving is a new mechanic from New Capenna. Haha. -ha. It says to have a creature to have a creature connive, draw a card, then discard a card. If you discard a non-land card, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature. So Kamiz or Kamiz says every time that you attack, it doesn't need to be this commander, it could be another one one, it could be something else on your battlefield. When it attacks, you say uh 
that creature can't be blocked this turn. And then, should you have another creature attacking, you can choose that creature. As long as it has a lesser power, it's going to gain double strike. And that means pretty much you don't want to block that thing either. No. Uh, it's going to be pretty nasty, whatever it ends up being. So, uh, I saw you noted here that of the commander options, this is the lowest mana value. So, it's sitting yes. at four. It's sitting at four. I think the other two, uh, one of them's at like eight. Six. Six. There we go. Yeah. I and can the other read. one is, is at like five. five. But two colors. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this is really interesting. I do like the fact that you're giving double strike. To me, we talked about underrated mechanics recently. Josh said haste, and I said first strike, or just like mm, combat type yeah. stuff. Because I really think double strike is one of those things where, you know, you only have so many turns to kill someone. If you can hit them twice, you know, extra combats are good. Double strike is kind of similar in a way. Yeah, and we'll get into it later, but double strike is extra good in this deck because mm. of all the damage triggers. Ah, very cool. Yeah, so there's lots of creatures that care about deal dealing combat damage. Another reason. And of course, if you have like, the swords or anything that triggers oh. on hit, those also work well with double strike. So really cool. I like Kamiz a lot, or Kamiz. Yeah. Big K. <laughs> um, what else today? Oh, and I also mentioned that the fact that connive happens and then you choose another creature and you have an opportunity to fix uh, ah. the creatures uh, to make, like maybe you have two one ones and you need something with lesser power. You tag with both of them. One of them connives. Yeah. Hopefully, it's a non-land that you discard, and then you get a plus one counter on it, and then boom, you have a two-two and a one-one, and then you can choose the other one to get double strike. Strike, yeah. So it's just oh. a nice little, a yeah. lot of nice things on it. Yeah, it, it definitely synergizes really well with itself, and I think for me, the biggest thing is uh, this commander itself does not need to attack. Yes. Something else can do it, and so you don't risk the life of it. It's also card advantage on a stick. Very cool. Okay. Right, next up. Next up, we got Tivit, Seller of Secrets. I wonder how much they cost. <laughs> Three, a white, blue, and a black for a legendary creature, Sphinx Rogue. It is a 6-6, six, six, and it has flying and ward three. So anytime you target it, uh, and the opponent targets it, they have to pay an extra three mana. Yep. And it says, Council's Dilemma. We haven't seen this text in a while. Okay. Whenever Tivit enters the battlefield or deals combat damage to a player, starting with you, each player votes for evidence or bribery. So I play Tivit. I say evidence. Ashlyn says bribery, and the other two say evidence and bribery. For each evidence vote, investigate. For each bribery vote, create a treasure token. And the final line of text, when while voting, you may vote an additional time. So actually, I cast Tevit and I say, I want bribery twice. And yeah. then everyone goes around, and then you tally it up. Most likely, you're going to get two treasures that you voted for, and everyone else gives you a clue. So two treasures, three clues uh, on entering the battlefield or dealing combat damage for Tivit. Which is pretty good. I mean... It well, is, that is five artifacts yeah. in a row. There's a card called Time Sieve, I think, where you sack five artifacts and take an extra turn. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, so oh, that's, that's just a wild. five artifact generator right here with Tivit. Yeah, and with Double Strike. Yeah, oh my gosh, and you're doing 10? <laughs> you get four? <laughs> oh my god. Wow, that's pretty wild. I mean, it does have to be the lesser of the power creatures, but still, yeah, it's a like six, the six. dream scenario here. Yeah, yeah, if you have a 7-7 seven, seven out and somehow get Tivit Double Strike, but even then... Tivit is by itself very powerful. Yes. Uh, you're getting at least two treasures if you want to go treasures. Um, and if, hey, if your opponents decide to give you treasures for some reason, maybe they don't want you to have cards. You could have zero cards in hand. Right. I could see someone giving someone a treasure if you have like 20, 10 lands out and no cards in hand, I would give them treasure actually instead of a card draw engine. Yeah. And like we, you've talked about before, just treasures are so powerful. Even just one treasure is just good. Treasure. It yeah. kind of pays for itself a little bit over time. That's right. Well, yeah, when you cast it, it costs six mana, but you're going to guaranteed, if you vote for treasure both times, get two treasures. So that's like four mana total for him. Treasures are very good. So Tivit, also very powerful. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the last one up. Last but not least, we have Oscar, the rubbish reclaimer. Wait, oh my hold gosh. on. Is that Oscar the Grouch? <laughs> hold on. This Oscar has a K in it, notably. Yes. But this is Oscar Rubbish Reclaimer. Oh my gosh, I just got that. There's I've no, been looking at this deck. <laughs> there's no way that they did this on purpose, right? Let us know in the comments. Okay. Okay. It is a uh, three blue and black. It's a human wizard. It's a three, three. And it says this spell costs one less to cast for each different mana value among cards in your graveyard. Whenever you discard a non-land card, you may cast it from your graveyard. Oh, okay. Very cool. So it could cost just blue and the black if you have a one drop, two drop, and three drop in your graveyard. Yes. Uh, but anytime you discard, this is the cool thing. Anytime you discard, you can cast it from your graveyard. And it doesn't say till end of turn. It just says yeah. you can do it. Does that, Well, I assumed that meant like as soon as this happens, do you, is it just that may a be the present? Case. Yeah. I, it's interesting because I don't know if it adds the text to the card. This is something that we'll have to check later, but either way, it's still pretty powerful because yeah. if you're discarding instants and sorceries, which you, I'm assuming you're doing here, but even if you discard like an enchantment, 
this is a human wizard. There's a lot of cool spells and things that wizards can do. So it, even creatures, you could discard and cast it. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah, I believe you have to cast it at that moment. But even so... It's still nice. Yeah, it's giving you that option. Instead of pitching a card, you get to use it. Yeah, if you get you to use mana. it. Yeah, yeah. And um, your commander... I like it. Yeah. Common is connives, and you're going to be looting with connives, so... Very nice. interesting. That's right. You got card draw on Cam is here. Okay. So if you're in a Graveyards Matters deck, you maybe want to run good old Oscar. Yeah. Also, um, it's just a flavor score because... Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a rubbish reclaimer, and it's also literally going through the Graveyard, so I appreciated that. I don't know if Oscar the Grouch would be blue-black, though. No. He kind of strikes me as a gruel, red-green kind of guy. I was going to say the same. Yeah. He's definitely gruel. <laughs> okay. So now that we've talked about the three commander potentials, again, only uh, the first two are in the full colors of Obscura. Oscar is just a two-color commander. Let's talk about the do, 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 do. stats. 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 <laughs> Wizards have been doing great with these stats and this deck, believe it or not, it ain't no different. It's juicy for sure. Yeah, so this is a white, blue, black deck, so you're not going to see as much ramp in the land side, but that doesn't mean you can't have ramp at all for this That's deck right. has 12. And 12 ramp spells. Yeah, it's 12. Every artifact, aside from talismans, that it could put in this deck, it right. has pretty much. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I, I, it's actually great because the card draw here is also extremely high. It's 14 sources of card draw. Your commander is like half a card because it's card advantage, but you're getting a lot of selection with the connive. So there's yeah. a lot of good stuff going on there. And Tivit is just nuts. Uh, <laughs> that's if you get you know clues, that technically is card advantage as well. So there's a right. lot of card draw in here. And uh, there's also a good amount of removal, especially single target removal. Mm. We've got over 11 different pieces of single target removal. Wow. It's got one of my favorite spells, Utter End. Because you're in one. white and black, you have access to pretty much all of the most amazing removal spells of all time for Commander specifically. Yeah. Um, so even if you're running around and you have some extra white, black removal spells lying around that you can put into the deck, that might not be a wor the worst idea either. Yeah. You've got swords, the plowshares and stuff in here too. Yeah, so. there's swords in there. There's Very like, good There's stuff. some new ones. Yeah. It's really good. And then board wipes, there's three, Okay, which cool. is fine for this deck. Yeah. You yeah. want to be attacking. You want to be attacking. You probably don't want to be wiping the board as much. Uh, it's probably hard to rebuild, especially, you know, when your commander costs four, then six, then eight. But attacking is what it's mostly about. So that makes sense. Speaking of attacking. Yeah, there are 22 cards that care about attacking or give you on combat damage triggers. Yes. So you want to turn them sideways? You got it. Uh of course, dealing combat damage is also important because you need to be able to not get blocked. So there's a lot of evasion in the deck. There's 21 ways to evade your opponents or have things that care about evading yeah. them. And 22 triggers that care about it. That seems pretty nice, actually. That's yeah. Almost one for one. Smack them. Smack them in the face. Uh, 14 cards that care about the graveyard. If you're in blue and black, you're probably going to have a few of these just naturally, so that's good to see. And then five cards that have connive on it. Connive isn't the theme of the deck, by the way. It's a thing the deck does, but really it's about attacking, giving that double strike, and getting some card advantage. Yeah. Okay. So those are some great stats, uh, which is awesome because it means that when we get to the part where we have to add cards and take them out, we don't need to be cutting things just to add ramp right. and all that stuff. We can actually focus on making the deck uh, do some more cool stuff. Okay, now let's talk about the total reprint value. Uh -oh. This is something that people really love to talk about, and we always cover it on the show. What we do, we take the prices prior to the deck being revealed, and then we add up all of the reprints of the cards here that don't count the new cards, because, again, prior to the reveal, no one even knows what the new cards are right. worth. So there could be some hidden extra value there. There quite often is. Dockside Extortionist was the most famous case uh -huh. of this in most recent years. Okay, the total reprint value, Ashlyn... Can Pretty good, it? yeah. Uh, the total reprint value is one hundred and twenty dollars and ninety-seven cents. Ding 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 ding. Wow! The crowd goes wild. Uh, just so you know, the average re precon reprint value for the past three years has been around eighty bucks. So this is forty dollars over the average. This is by far one of the most <laughs> uh, valuable reprints uh, in terms of what they're they're giving here, which is great. This is the, definitely the highest value precon I believe from Series of New Capenna. Yes, it, it absolutely is, and several others. It's just it's juicy. It is juicy. So let's talk about those notable reprints because maybe you're just a collector and you're going to take this back apart after you buy it on channelfireball.com slash command. Uh, the notable reprints, all cards worth more than $2. There were eight of them worth more than five and 17 of them worth more than four or two. Yeah. So that's where a lot of that value comes. 17 different cards that are worth $2 or more definitely adds up. But eight cards, $5 or more, typically we see like three or yeah. two. Sometimes even one. They definitely like just so many Esper or Demir. Yeah. 
that I, you haven't seen in a while too, so I'm pretty excited. Yep. So the first one, we'll run through these pretty quickly because there's so many. Silent Blade Oni. This is a demon ninja. Uh, ninjas have seen a big resurgence. Uh, this one in particular allows you to cast a spell from someone's hand if you ninja two it out or if you just deal combat damage. But if you do it twice in this deck, then you're casting two cards out of someone's hands. Pretty nuts. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have Rexiel, the Risen Deep. What's this guy all about? Uh, I love Rexiel. Uh, Rexiel has Island and Swap Block, and basically whenever it deals combat damage, uh, you can cast a target or target instant or sorcery card from a player's graveyard. I think it's the one you deal damage to ah. without paying its mana cost. Um, so you get to, you kind of get to go through and nice. use other player spells. It is um, six mana. And I, I kind of want to play Tivit more than Rexiel. Yeah, that's fair. Also, I, I Rexiel, take pressures over. Boy, Rexiel spells. gets destroyed so quickly whenever you play him uh, or them or it. It's a well, crack. People don't want their, their graveyards messed with. Yeah, Rex feels a, a big baddie. Uh, and we've seen this, actually, a lot of the uh, the decks have these filter lands. So Fetid Heath, it's a filter land you can tap to add colorless, or you can tap a white or a black to add white, white, black, white, or black, black. So it's a filter land. It's great when you have decks that have more complex mana costs, especially when it's white, white, or black, black. And we see a lot of that typically in white and black decks. And then we have Fallen Shinobi, another ninjutsu classic, I would say. I love it. Uh... Basically, it has whenever it deals combat damage, uh, that player exiles the top two cards of the library, and you can cast one of them without paying its mana cost. Nice. And you can get it out there, Ninjutsu, for just four mana. Pretty good. You're probably going to have some unblocked creatures in this when they get double strike or whatever it is. Um, it's interesting because both Fallen Shinobi and uh, Silent Blade Oni are in the ninjas are now popular, more popular than ever. Silent Blade Oni was like almost 20 bucks. Was and really? Yeah, I'm following Shinobi. It's like $6, so pretty good stuff. Next up, we have Shrionic Resonator. I don't know if I've seen this art before. It's two mana for an artifact. You tap two, to, you tap two uh, and you play, and you tap it. Copy target, trigger the ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. So this is like a classic combo engine in so many EDH decks. But in this deck's case, you get to have either two triggers of Tivit, two triggers of Kamiz, lots of interesting stuff to double up on. Even the Fallen Shinobi and Silent Blade Shinobi, yeah. those are all things that Shrionic Resonator can hit. It's a 590. Wow. Great card. Uh, next, we have Alayla at five sixty. Uh, you know, she was a, she was she even a brawl deck. She was the brawl, yeah. Yeah. When we did the uh, <laughs> very arc, very unfortunate arcane signet brawl decks back in the day. <laughs> oh, Alayla was one of the commanders and yes. a great commander though. Yeah, she she's great. She's a fairy warlock. She has flying, death touch, life link. Uh, she buffs other creatures with flying, and. Um, Whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment, you get to create more fairies. Yeah, um, and you need those small little creatures for be to be targets for Camas when you uh, want to be swinging in. Also, flying death touch, life link. No one's gonna be blocking this thing. Yeah, anytime soon. Um, Chasm Skulker is up next. One of my personal favorite cards. I put it in my chase. So good. Two in the blue. You basically put a bunch of plus one plus one counters on it, and when it dies, you make a ton of one one blue squid creature tokens with Island Walk, where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on Chasm Skulker. Yay! Five twenty five. Five twenty five. And the last one over five bucks is Quietus Spike. This is just an equipment that when you deal combat damage to a player, they lose half their life rounded up. Imagine if you double strike them. It's so good. I, when we were play testing it, I got that out like so early. It was Ooh, ridiculous. It just put someone at like 12. It nice. was great. All right. We'll do these last few in a bunch. So okay. we'll take the first two. Next, we have Drana, Liberator of Malakir. So these are all under the $5 category, but above two bucks. Drana, yes. great vampire lord. Drana at 435. Uh, then we have Custody. Cas Custody Lich. Custody Lich. And that one's going to be 435. And yeah, this one, when you have Monarch, you get, to, whenever you become the Monarch, uh, your target player gets to sacrifice a creature. And it introduces Monarch to the game, yes. which is more important to ETB. me because then the game gets real interesting. Everyone's swinging around and that seems like a lot of fun. Uh, then we have Demir Signet, just a classic Signet. All the Signets you'll probably play from now until forever. They're great to mana ramp. Uh, as well as Creeping Tar Pit. This is an unblockable land that turns into a man land uh, and then it can just smack people for three each turn it's a win condition oftentimes you just you need to get that extra damage in and then we got a few more here these are again all over two bucks so that's why this deck's low with value i have used most of these cards oh, in yeah. some deck or another so far this i was this deck is out of the box it's really good yeah super solid uh dragon lord ojatai Love him. He's flying uh, hexproof as long as it's untapped. And then when it deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of the library and in your order. Nice. So you're impulsing yeah. each time, I think. Yeah, or anticipate. I think you're in play. Oh, uh, yeah, anticipating. And then, of course, Austere Command. 
The classic four white wipe, big big old board wipe. Yeah, this and Farewell are sort of like the two most powerful board wipes that white has at six mana, so very good stuff. And then the last is Fell Warstone. Great mana rocket, two mana. Wayfarer's Bobble. Love this card. Uh, really good index that especially don't play green. And then Swords of Plowshares. Just yeah. one of the best removal spells of Always all time. solid. Of all time. Wow, so pretty good if you're watching me on camera. It's got a grip. I got a grip. I would be, pr no, I would not be, well, would I keep this hand? I would turn one, creepy <laughs> tar pit. To, yeah, okay. Turn two, fetid heath, and play Demir Signet. Yeah, I was going to say, get those Hopefully rocks out there. Hopefully draw something by then, or. Wayfarer's Bobble. Or I could have turned it around, right? I could have played fetid heath, turp, tap to play Wayfarer's Bobble, untap, hope I draw a land. <laughs> oh, there's only one land, two lands in here. Okay, okay. We will we'll play there. this experiment, yeah. Either way, great cards, uh, definitely very cool. Love this deck so far. So, Ashlyn, big question now is who should you run as the commander if you're to buy this deck right now mm -hmm. and want to go play with it? Uh, commas, 100%. The deck is built and tuned already and like to support commas, and commas supports it. Mm -hmm. uh, Tevit's nice. I think it's better than the 99 for this deck. Yeah. As is out of the box. Tevit would be great to just go and build with. Yeah, Otherwise, take the whole deck apart and build specifically around Tevit. I can definitely see that happening. Yeah. Yeah, but just. Commas is just so strong with all of the attack and damage triggers. It just benefits from having him as the commander. Yeah, very interesting stuff. I, I, I so far even just like sort of looking through the deck and and from the small amount of research I was able to do, I, I think this is by far the most powerful deck. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, and it's not even so that the commander is necessarily the most powerful. I think Commas' ability is fun, but it's more that it just has a very solid game plan, and you're not going to stumble. So let's talk about some of the best cards in the deck. Yeah, let me toss this paper out. Here. <laughs> I got another one here. Ugh. Oh, my. Okay. Best cards in the deck. All right. Best this cards first one. in the deck. It's a new one. Uh, well, change of plans. Uh, <laughs> it's X, uh, colorless, and a blue for an instant. Each of X target creatures you control connive. You may have any number of them phase out. Ooh. So I, I really like this card. It's instant protection against board wipes. Any number of them? Any number of them. Wow. Which, okay. I mean, you're going to choose all, right? I yeah, feel like. well, you have to pay for all of it, obviously. Yeah. But if you have three creatures, this is five mana. All of them connive. And then if they are facing a board wipe, you just have them phase out. They whoop, they disappear until uh, your controller's next turn. How'd that go? Uh, they, whoop. they whooped whoop. there it is change of plans yeah so this is kind of like Teferi's Protection this is kind of like Heroic Intervention yeah. uh, and it seems pretty good and this deck needs it because you don't want to get a board wipe you want to attack every turn right. if you can so. right you don't want to be chilling and you get card draw yeah so uh, next up best card in the deck is Tivit Seller of Secrets again this is just awesome if you connect once with Tivit it is going to be pretty powerful uh, I like it. Yeah. The next up is Sun Titan. Titan. So why did you like this card so much in this deck specifically? Okay, so I could be biased because I just love the Titans and I think Sun Titan's a great card. I think in this deck, pretty it's, swell guy. He's pretty swell. Um, there, where did it, well, did I have a note of it? Yes, there are twenty eight non land targets in the deck. Okay, so um, that Wayfarer's Bobble they were talking yeah, about earlier. Yeah. All a lot of the creatures are three and under. So Sun Titan is great for anything you're pitching to the graveyard that's not a non land. Oh, you're conniving. That's right. You get it back with. Sun mm -hmm. Titan. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's so synergistic. I just, ugh. Mwah. Mwah. Love it. I like that too. That's good stuff. Uh, we also got Smuggler's Share. I forgot to talk about this card. We talked about this on oh, our yeah. live episode with Posty. But this is two and white for an enchantment. May go in a lot of decks. Uh, at the beginning of each end step, draw a card for each opponent who drew two or more cards this turn. Then create a treasure token for each opponent who had two or more lands enter the battlefield under their control this turn. So this is one of those enchantments in decks that don't have green that might just need a little bit of extra help. Yeah. Uh, and then you also put this really interesting <laughs> card down. Uh, I'm actually, I think this actually has a lot of playability because it is kind of cheap and it's very much like, yeah. uh, a little bit like Swan Song. It's an offer you can't refuse. Actually, it's a, an offer you can't refuse. An offer you can't, I'm going to go off my cow first. <laughs> okay, it's one blue for an instant counter target non-creature spell. Its controller creates two treasure tokens. Yeah. So instead of giving them a 2-2 two -two bird, uh, whatever it is, with Swan Song, you're giving them two treasure tokens, but it is just one blue, and it counters any, any. non-creature spell, whereas Swan Song is a bit more limited. So that's interesting. You could do Planeswalkers, Enchantment, Sorceries, all that good stuff. It's also just really fun to say. So like at any game, you are like, <laughs> I challenge you not to read it that way. Hey, I'd like to uh, give you an offer. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty interesting. I think the two treasures is a bit of a drawback, but yeah. this could be late game, right? And the two treasures are not that much of a difference maker when the opponent has eight lands. 
uh, or it could be super early and yeah, they get a little boost out of it, but you stop something that was disastrous for you and you're- all you had to do was hold up one blue. Yeah. Even the better cards. if you have a blue-white combo land, you could pretend like you're holding up Swords of Pleasures too. Oh, ho, ho. So yeah, I do like an offer your combo. Ho. It gets worse every time. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you to... <laughs> oh, yeah, it sounds like a Murloc. <laughs> well, not Murlocs, but we do have a mineral break coming up right now. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the cards to add, honorable mentions, and of course the cards to take out of this deck. We'll be right back. Greetings, anointed ones. I am Temet, Vizier of Noctamoon. Here on Amenket, summers are brutal. So when the sweltering sun rises to its apex, you must protect yourself from the infernal heat. Thank the gods I have me undies to keep me feeling cool. Summer may be sweaty, but with me undies light and breathable micromodal fabric, your hindquarters can stay comfy and cool. They have delightful seasonal prints and many styles to choose from. Available from extra small to 4XL. Bring some trouble. Tropical bliss to your butt with this festive pineapple print. And if you do venture out for a dip in the oasis, check out their new and improved swimwear styles, like these tropical toucans. Miandi swimsuits are soft, stretchy, and sustainably made. Ah, finally the summer sun descends beneath the... Wait, hold on. We have a second sun? Are you kidding me? MeUndies has a great offer for fans of the Command Zone. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off. If you sign up for their free-to-join membership, you can apply that 15% off to their already discounted membership prices. To get 15% off your first order and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash command. Again, that's MeUndies.com slash command. Hey folks, it's Tireless Provisioner here. With me in play, whenever you have a land ETB, you can make either a treasure or a food. But let's be honest, no one wants to make food. And why would you? Between shopping, cooking, and cleanup, making food yourself is exhausting, especially in the summer heat. That's why I use Factor, the meal service that delivers fully prepped, chef-crafted meals straight to your door. Each Factor meal arrives ready to eat in just two minutes, and with no dishes to wash, the cleanup step couldn't be simpler. Factor makes it easy for me to eat clean 24-7, with fresh, never-frozen prepared meals that are so delicious you wouldn't believe they're actually good for you. I could never get tired of eating their shredded chicken taco bowl, and not just because I'm tireless, it's because it's good! Factor offers 30 options each week, including vegan, keto, and low calorie meals. And I can make changes to my plan whenever I want. Now that Factor's handling the food, I'm free to make some treasure. But you know, maybe the real treasure was the food we didn't have to make along the way. Or maybe it's these tokens, I'm rich! Head to go.factor75.com slash command120 and use code command120 for $120 off. That's code command120 at go.factor75.com slash command120 for $120 off. Hey everyone, today we wanted to talk to you about our sponsor, Raycon Wireless Earbuds. Yeah, we've done a lot of really fun sketches about Raycons over the years, but we also want you to know that it's a great product that we actually use. Yeah, I listen to a ton of music and podcasts and Raycons are great while you're working out or or walking your dog. I'm sure you know that quality is super important to us here at the Command Zone across the board in everything we create and endorse, and Raycons really deliver. In fact, I like mine so much that I often give them as gifts to people, mm. like my nieces and nephews, because they want something cool, but they're also kids. Uh-huh. So Raycons are perfect because they're inexpensive, even though they sound really, really great. And so when my nieces and nephews inevitably like lose or destroy them, <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. In fact, it's almost good, because then I have something to get them for their next birthday or Christmas or whatever. <laughs> Well, seriously, though, at half the price of other premium brands, Raycons are the best bang for your buck. Plus, their everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. So whether you're listening at work, the gym, or out in the world, they'll stay comfortable and never fall out of your ears no matter how much you shake things up. And Raycons have eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, so you can spend all day listening to whatever you want. Like your favorite Commander podcast. Yeah, or us. Hey, that's what I meant when I said Commander podcast. There's other really good ones out there. That's a good point. Right now, Command Zone listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash command. That's buyraycon.com slash command to save 15% on Raycons. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. All righty. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we're back. And we're talking about the Obscura ple- pre- Plecon, Precon, Obscura <laughs> Operation. A lot of uh, alliteration in this set. What, I keep thinking of a song when I hear that. It's like, what is, how does it go? It's like something, something, Operator. Oh, they got that. Wait. Yeah, 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 that's it. Da, ba, da, 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 is that like in Tony Hawk or something? I don't it know. It might have been. Or, like, it's by the band? Offspring, I believe. You got to call them. No, I don't think it's Operator, is it? 
Oh my gosh, have I been singing it wrong this whole time? Maybe. Either way, it's <laughs> Offspring, and it's no, that's the song we wrote for this episode. Yes. Yeah, God, that's obscure. Uh, 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 right, uh, okay. <laughs> so, Ashlyn, when you were looking at cards to add into this deck of cards <laughs> to take out, what, what was your general direction? What were you trying to do? I was trying to make my opponents as miserable as possible. No, I'm just kidding. Nice. Um, I wanted to go a mill route because... I don't uh, usually play blue, and if I do, I'm playing Mill. Uh, that was my first deck, Una, Queen of the Fae. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, nice. so, uh, yeah, we're going to be milling in this deck, a little at least. Okay, cool. So, uh, again, the budget is about $30 for this exercise. So, let's go through the cards now that we know that we're focused a little bit more on milling, not only by ourselves, of course, but our opponents, yes. too. I would say milling, and so we went mill and damage, uh, triggers Some more basically triggers? yeah just okay. to take advantage of it but yes uh thirty dollars i spent a bunch of it on this first card you did almost card. half the but almost half the budget goes <laughs> this first card it's but worth it it's a good card it's Dalphy void walker you're gonna hear us talk about this card probably a lot i know it's also a rogue which is kind of thematic because all the other creatures here yeah. are rogues it's black black for a three two with shadow so it can't be blocked can be blocked or can block or be blocked only with creatures with shadow this is never going to come up just unless you're playing i think ukima has shadow okay yeah i looked up i tried to see if there was a lot of cards that i could use shadow with but no there's not no. many at all not at all uh it just has shadow because it, you know he's in the shadows all right and it says if a card will be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere instead exile it with a void counter on it so that's just great by itself yes anytime a card will be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere discard from the deck whatever you get it gets exiled it doesn't never hits the graveyard and you can also tap and sack the Dalthy da Voidwalker to choose an exiled card in opponent controls with a void counter on it. You can play it this turn without paying its mana cost. Ooh, that's, wow. that's the nice thing there. So this card comes out early. It sticks around. It makes opponents miserable because they can't do their graveyard synergies. And then at the opportune moment, you crack it, play that card without paying its mana cost. And if we're doing a mill deck, even if you get it late game, it's great because you've put so many of your opponent's cards in their graveyard. Oh, into exile. Oh, into exile. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you're just milling a bunch, then Dalthy Voidwalker is just taking out yeah. chunks of their deck over and over and over again. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, and it feels bad to use removal on it too. You're just hoping that you, that the Dalthy Voidwalker doesn't get something really good from you. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have uh, at four dollars Nashi Moon Sage's Scion. This is from Kamigawa. It's a new card. Uh, it says it's one black black. It's a Rat Ninja with Ninjutsu four, and whenever Moon Sage. Whenever Moon Sage's Scion deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of each player's library. Library, there we go. <laughs> Until end of turn, you may play one of those cards. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. Wow, that's cool. So it's very similar to like Bolas Asida, where you're paying life for the card off of someone's library in this case. Uh, so you're going to deal combat damage, obviously. You're going to ninjutsu yes. this in for three in the black, or you're just going to play it for three, and then hopefully you can get in for damage. Yeah, because... your commander makes it unblockable. Yeah, exactly. And so even if you don't get the double trigger, you're going to get that single trigger, and you get to cast one of those spells, and you can cast it for your life total. So if someone drops like a Kozilek off the top of their library yes. and it's turn five, you'll probably cast that thing. Cast, by the way. So you're going to get all the cast triggers. Oh, that's triggers right. And, and I didn't the even think triggers. about that. Yeah, pretty powerful. Now, obviously, you cannot play any lands. No, you can. You can play one of those cards. Oh, my gosh. So. That's great. Nashi's very good in this deck. Um, just by himself as a one black, black rat ninja. Pretty awesome, too. All right. Next up, we got Virtus the Veiled. At $1. Nice. One, uh, two in the black for a 1-1. One, one. Azra Assassin. It has partnered with a card called Gorm the Great, but Gorm's not making an appearance here. Nope. Vir Vir Virtus has Death Touch, and then whenever Virtus the Veil deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up. Camus gives this unblockable. Yes. You've got redundancy in this deck because you got Quietus Spike. Imagine if you just managed to swing this at someone and get Double Strike on it. It's, it's, a, f it's a four turn clock, essentially. Yeah, you'll go from 40 to 20, 20 to 10, 10 to 5, 5 to 3. 3 to 1, you die. Pretty cool. Yeah. Love it. This next card, <laughs> incredibly powerful. Yes. Uh, the next card is $1. It is Consuming Aberration for three blue and a black. It's a creature horror. Uh, its power and toughness is star star, which means it's uh, equal, equal to, to the number of cards in each of your opponent's graveyards. Okay. Or not each, sorry. Just your opponent's graveyard. Same thing, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whenever you cast a spell... Each opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land card. Then puts those cards 
into their graveyard. Wow. So look, Consuming Aberration and Doubt the Voidwalker, a little bit of a nonbo. But let's say there's at least one card in the graveyard. This is a 1-1. One, one. And then Douthy Voidwalker just starts chewing up everything you exile. Or you just turbo mill people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very cool. So this gets a lot of cards into the graveyard. It also gets a lot of cards... Uh, you know, just for you to look at because maybe there's ways to interact with them or you just want to get them out of people's decks. Just because graveyards are powerful doesn't mean that every card needs to be in the graveyard. So a lot of times you'll find yourself milling someone out and they go, oh crud, there goes one, not only the card I needed, but two, the card I need to use to get it back from my graveyard. <laughs> so Consuming Aberration has sort of that ability because you're revealing until you hit a land. Sometimes you'll get like pockets of five, six, ten yeah. cards. And then I would say like if you can knife Consuming Aberration, then even if stuff stops going to your, the graveyards... It still stays. Right. Mirko Vosk, Mind Drinker. Haven't seen this card in a while. <laughs> it's also only $1. Yeah, because it's all milrific. Three blue and a black for a 2-4 with flying. Whenever Mirko deals combat damage to a player, that player reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal four land cards, then puts those cards into their graveyard. So that's consuming aber aberration times four. Yeah, it's it's on steroids. Yeah, that's uh, definitely going to get a lot of people milled out. And you're going to make a big impact 100% if that thing connects. And what's the part? It's a 2-4. It's a 2-4 so with it, flying. It could get double strike very very easily. That's right. That's a good point. Uh, next up, we have Raven Guildmaster at $2.50. Whenever Guildmaster deals combat damage to a player, that player removes the top 10 cards of their library from the game. Wow. And you can also morph it and unmorph it for four mana. Uh, that's nice. That is a lot of cards getting removed. Yeah. And I figured mor you don't even have to worry about the mor morph. The mor morph. Morph. There morph. we go. I, I keep wanting to say morph. Uh, morph cost because, you're, again, your commander gives unblockable and it's just, true. it's nice. I should make a morph token that's just Murph's face on it. Maybe oh that could gosh, be... Why haven't we done that? Yeah, there we go. Yes. All right, next up, Silas Ren, Seeker Adept, one of my favorites. Uh, I played this on game that's a long time ago. One yeah. blue black for a 2-2 legendary artifact creature. With Death Touch, whenever Silas Ren deals combat damage to a player, choose target artifact card in your graveyard, you may cast that card this turn. Seems really good with Wayfarer's Bobble. Um, yeah, it's it's a nice little loop. Yeah, and this card's pretty, pretty uh, not too bad either, but this is around like six bucks. And if people want to get rid of... Um, um, what is it? Your Quietus Spike? Quietus Spike? Quietus Spike for sure. Quietus Spike, uh, your Stronic Resonator. I can't yep. pronounce anything today. I'm sorry. Those are definitely um, big targets. Yeah. Okay. Uh, up next at 20 cents, uh, Master of Prigate. Master of Predicaments. What a predicament, this word. <laughs> okay, so this card is definitely more of a pet card going in this deck, but I think it's so fun if it connects. Uh, it is three blue-blue. It's a Sphinx. 4-4, four, four. it has flying. Whenever Master of Predicaments deals combat damage to a player, choose a card in your hand. That player guesses whether the card's converted mana cost is greater than four. <laughs> uh, if that player guessed wrong, you may cast the card without paying its mana cost. Wow, so I deal combat damage to you. I, look, I point a card at the bank and go, is this mana cost greater or less than four? Yeah. And what do you say? I say less than Okay, well, it turns out it's an eight drop. You were no. wrong. I cast it for free. <laughs> and if you, you get just, double. Do you, do you always say that's going to be le greater than four because you're just afraid? So that means Master Predicaments, no matter what, pretty much is going to be casting your four drops and below for free? Yeah, yeah. Especially if you late game, like, who knows what you have in hand. Yeah, I, I'm always saying greater than four because I don't want them to put out oh, the Neldrazi. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. And then most of the creatures are less than four, but still. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Very nice. And double, doubling that up with... Uh, with Camus also sounds good. 4-4 four, four is a little harder, but look, you're conniving. You're yeah. making your creatures bigger. Very cool. All right, next up we got Teferi's Tutelage. Two in the blue for an enchantment. When Teferi's Tutelage enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent mills two cards. Excuse <laughs> you, Ashlyn. So this Whoops. means that every time you connive, right? Uh, yeah. Every time you get a lot of conniving going there, you're just making people mill like crazy. Yeah, and I figured like it'd be nice to have just a little extra card draw when we get to cards to take out, but... It's just nice. It, it works with the deck. Yeah, you're going for that mill strategy. I am. I don't know if I, uh, I'm loving it. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, next up, we have Elixir of Immortality at 60 cents. It is a colorless, uh, and then it has tap, pay two and tap. You gain at five life, shuffle it into your library with your graveyard, and nice. yeah, that's it. You get, your, you get your graveyard back. This is definitely in those decks that mill a ton. Even in decks that don't mill a ton, I, Josh could just incidentally probably place in a couple of decks and it wouldn't be that bad. Yeah. If you're in danger or you need to even rebuy some stuff because you connive so much, you're like, oh, you know, by the end of it, I was actually dishing cards I wanted in my deck. Well, Elixir of Immortality is a way for you to get that back. It's also a way for you to just save yourself from being milled out. Yeah. 
Okay, so a uh, little spicy ads there. We're going the Millie route. Yeah. Tons of fun. Uh, obviously, there are t- so many cards in Magic's history that are all about Mill. Yeah. Uh, so if you do want to go further down this road, just, you know, EDH rec, tapped out. There's tons of resources online to find sort of the best Mill strategies and how you can make it flavorful to your awful needs. <laughs> And the total for the upgrades came out to $29.05. So wow, right we're under. there. <laughs> nice. Good job. All right. Next up, we have some honorable mentions. I always love these. Yes. Uh, these are, this one's crazy. So <laughs> Ashling the Extinguisher is an honorable mention. Ashlyn the Extinguisher. Two black black for a 4-4 four, four legendary creature. Whenever Ashlyn deals combat damage to a player, choose target creature that player controls. Here she sacrifices that creature. So you get to choose. It's single target removal because you can actually choose which creature. Yeah. that. Yeah. So this can get either unblockable or double strike by Cam is yeah. pretty good. It's $6. And uh, yeah, I totally chose it for that. And also possibly maybe, but not really. But there is a chance because it's Ashling. Yeah, Ashling the Extinguisher. Uh, we also have Sword of the Animist, which is an on a hit uh, on attack trigger, actually. You're yes. going to be attacking a lot. You're, you actually, this is great because you still want you know, to get attack triggers. Yeah, and this will bring a, ba- a basic land on the battlefield. Tapped. Uh, Strixhaven Stadium. Why is this in here? <laughs> so I really like I it. I like it, too. I feel like you could actually get there in this deck because of how much evasion it has. Yeah, so this is a three mana that taps for a mana, but every time you tap it, you get put a point counter on it, like you're playing a game. And then also... Uh, when creature deals combat damage to you, you remove a point yes. counter, but you get to add point counters. And how do you do that? Uh, you add it by whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, uh, you put a counter on it. And then if it has 10 or more point counters, remove all of them and that player loses the game. Dang. Dang. You just choose one player at a time to lose the game. Yes. It's great. Incredible. Um, Last up, we got Bone Dancer as an honorable mention. One black, black, summon zombie. Old school. It's a 2-2. Two, two. You can pay zero to put the top creature card of defending player's graveyard into play under your control. Bone Dancer deals no combat damage this turn and uses ability only if Bone Dancer is attacking and unblocked and only <laughs> once each turn. And it costs zero. That's cool. Yeah. So, really powerful. Your opponents will now have to, by the way, they can't start shuffling through their graveyards because this says the top card. Yeah. Uh, there's, I think, I forget which the, um, there's another card that reanimates that cares about the top card, Shallow Grave, I think. So when this card is out, please make sure that you tell your opponents to not shuffle their graveyards. Yeah, don't around. look through it or anything. Well, they can look through it, just don't change the order. Yeah. Very cool. I like Bone Dancer a lot. Looks really good in this deck. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Doesn't go well in that, like the uh, the decks that want to care about one once attacking and getting right. unblockable, but... Still pretty good because with Camus, that thing is not getting touched. Nope. Okay, so let's talk about some of the cards to take out. First up, we like these cards, but but we don't like them enough compared to the cards we just added in. Yes, they are good cards, just we have to make choices. And also, by the way, if you disagree with the choice, you do you. It's your life. Skyway Robber. Wants to take from your life, though. Three in the blue. It's a 3-3 three, three bird rogue with flying. It has escape for three in the blue, so you can exile five other cards from your graveyard and then cast this for that mana, for four mana. Skyway Robber escapes with whenever Skyway Robber deals combat damage to a player, you may cast an artifact, instant, or a sorcery spell from among cards exiled with Skyway Robber without paying its mana cost. So when you pay, uh, when you're exiling five cards from your graveyard, it says that now when you escape Skyway Robber, so you have to get into the graveyard, cast it, and exile five cards, and then swing with it, and then deal combat damage, and then you may cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery three if you happen to exile one of them from uh casting it for escape i think i know why you cut this why it's just way too many hurdles to jump through to get an effect yeah and it's if you if you exile something really powerful this becomes a huge target for removal um people will just be scared because you could be playing something crazy in your graveyard to exile with this but there's so many times when you'll have this before you even have one card in your graveyard Mm -hmm. and you're like why do i have just a four mana three three flyer yeah, it does nothing. Yeah, I don't like that. Good call. Yeah. All right, next up. Next up, we have life insurance. <laughs> it is a three colorless, a white, and a black enchantment. It has extort, which is whenever you cast a spell, you may pay a white or black. If you do, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Okay. And then the actual part of the enchantment is whenever a non-creature, non-token creature dies, you lose one life and create one treasure token. Oh. For five mana. Yeah, so you you might think I'm gonna make tons of treasure tokens with this. Revel and Riches does a similar thing. You don't really see it played that much. Uh, extort is nice. Every yeah. spell you get now, you get to pay an extra man into it to extort. But that's not how you're trying to win the game here. You're not trying to drain people out. And yeah, five mana enchantment that kind of says non-token uh, do nothing when you first play it is a bit tough. It's it's a cool card, and I I see like 
there's a way where in the right deck it can kind of fund itself with the with the extort and its ability but right. it's just not for this deck i think they yeah yeah it's just it's cool Next up, the removal, we have Commit to Memory on the top side. It's three in the blue for an instant that puts a target spell or non-land permanent into its owner's library second from the top. And then Memory for four blue blue, uh, you can cast it from your graveyard, then you exile it. Uh, you basically, everyone shuffles their hand in graveyard into your library and draws seven cards. So kind of like a wheel, but you're trying to mill people out and you're trying yeah. to get cards into their graveyard and not get them back. So that's going yep. to be a cut there. And you have better removal in the deck too, so it's not too crazy. Exacto mundo. Uh, next up, we have N Nadir Kraken. Sure. Nadir Kraken. Uh, it's a one blue blue Kraken for two three. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on the Kraken and create a one one blue tentacle creature token. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's just we have cards that do better. Yeah. And like, how often are you going to want to pay the one? Yeah, I mean, you're making stuff. a 1-1, one, one, but you're probably, you know, that's a lot of mana for a lot of, you know, if you're going to connive a few times or whatever, you are paying a lot. You get a lot of 1-1s. One, I can True. see the advantages here, but I can also see, hey, I want to be a little more direct with what I'm doing here. It doesn't. This creature itself doesn't have evasion. Yeah. It's one blue, blue. It's a little hard to cast, so I can I can see that. Greyblade Marauder, two in the black for a 1-4 with Death Touch. Whenever Greyblade Marauder deals combat damage to a player, that player loses life equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. I could see this working if it said yeah. every player's graveyard. Yeah. I mean, it's okay, but like if you draw that and you have nothing in your graveyard, yeah, it's kind of just, oh, 1-4, what is it? Yeah, it's just a 1-4 with Death Touch. Not so hot. Next up, we have Whirler Rogue, two blue-blue, human rogue artificer. Uh, it's 2-2. Two, two. Whenever Whirler Rogue enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one colors, Thopter artifact creature tokens with flying. Uh, and it also says, tap two untapped artifacts you control. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Yep, so this is typically a very good card. Much better in artifact decks. You are you can also tap the Thopters you make to make a creature unblockable, but your commander's already doing that, and this is also a 4-drop, so it seems like it's kind of competing for some space here. Yeah, and it doesn't have anything else it does, right? Like, it doesn't go with the attack damage or right, attack the combat or damage. damage. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, giving you an unblockable creature, if, you're, if your commander's already doing it, you might not need that a redundant as an effect. Uh, next up, Ghostly Pilfer, one in the blue, Spirit Rogue creature, for it's a 2-1. Whenever it becomes untapped, you may pay two if you do draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card. And then you can discard a card, Ghostly Pilfer, can't be blocked this turn. So I never want to discard a card to make this unblockable, to do give it two, and right. then wait to have to untap it the next turn, and then pay two mana to draw a card. Not so great. Whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card. This could be useful, yeah. but also... Uh, not that great. I'd rather just sort of do something I know I'm going to draw a card with. Yeah. Um, so I understand the cut there. Makes a lot of sense. And then also, like, again, this deck out of the box was just really, really strong. There were so many cards. It was very difficult to choose what to cut. Mm -hmm. um, but we did cut them. And up next is Nightmare <laughs> Unmaking. It's three uh, black black for sorcery. Choose one. Exile each creature with power greater than the number of cards in your hand. Or exile each creature with power less than the number of cards in your hand. Okay. Which is okay, but we don't want a lot of board wipes. And yeah. this one's, the variance on it is way too high. We already have uh, Dusk Dawn and Austere Command. Yeah, so yep. that makes sense. It just made sense. Yeah, well, speaking of Dusk Dawn, I think you wanted to cut it. <laughs> Goodbye! No, 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 that wasn't a cut. That's no, just, not, that's okay. a no, we're good. Okay, good, good, good. All right, uh, and then we actually skipped over this one, but you actually have Rexiel, the Risen Deep, as oh, a cut did here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we skipped over because it, it got buried Bye, into Rexel. the deck. So Rexiel, is, it's six mana. It's a lot of mana. I can understand why you'd want to cut this. Obviously, you'd think, well, it could be really good, and maybe it is good in your meta. In that case, maybe you want to cut, like, Dragonlord Ojutai or something else, or something that's not as, you know, powerful or more powerful, depending on what you're playing as. But I can see why you cut it. Yeah, he's just a little expensive. Goodbye, Rexy. And then, oh, I'm reading this one. I don't know why I'm handing it to you. Uh, lastly, we have Jailbreak. Uh, it is one colorless and a white. It says, it's a sorcery. Uh -huh. It says, return target permanent card in an opponent's graveyard to the battlefield under their control. When that permanent enters the battlefield, return up to one target permanent card with equal or lesser mana value from your graveyard to the battlefield. Ooh, you're giving them something so yeah. you can get something? And what you get is based on what you pick for them? Yeah. Ooh, what if there is no good targets? What if their targets are so bad for you that you don't want to pick it? Is yeah. the thing in your graveyard really worth it? Jailbreak is one in the white, right? So it's cheap. You can do a permanent. Uh, so you can do a land from Lands. their graveyard yeah, to get a land get for land. you. I mean, it is a way, but here's the thing. You were just ramping them in that case. Um, 
White, of course, needs some catch-up mechanics. So Jailbreak is interesting. I think it needs uh, some more testing, I think, before we know whether or not it's good or not, or just cut it. Yeah. Um, by the way, you're in black. You got tons of cards you can play to reanimate stuff. Try yeah. checking those out. Animate Dead. Reanimate. Reanimate. A little more expensive, but... Sure. Okay. So that's the 10 cards out with the 10 cards in. I like that we went sort of to try and focus a little bit more on mill. Uh, there, there are some play groups, again, where if you just play incidental mill or just have more of a, some mill cards in your deck, you will just end up housing some decks. <laughs> so I don't mind going this direction, even if it's not the most ideal or performative, right? You, you can also just take the couple mill cards out if you don't agree. And the other additions Ashlyn put in here are really solid. So do what you want at the end of the day. These are just our suggestions. Uh, but it's really fun to see how everyone tackles the problem. Because to me, I'm just here to try to play some fun magic games and if we're trying to just win 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 all the time it gets a little less fun yeah why not make your opponents miserable by milling out their favorite cards <laughs> yes perfect so how does this deck play you mentioned you play tested a couple times yes so basically you want to play cheap you want to play cheap value creatures which there are a lot of in the deck yep um that benefit from the commander and then overwhelm your opponents with tons of attacks yep uh play bombs and win oh Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Attack your opponent, play some really powerful cards, and win the game over and out. Yeah. Or you can mill them out. Oh, yeah. Boy. Or mill them out. Yeah. I don't know about that. No thanks. But that is, of course, always an option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To the listeners, let us know what you think about the Obscure Operation Precon. Were there any cards you missed? Uh, what direction would you take it? What direction would you not take it? Which cards would you remove? Would you actually choose one of the different commanders as the main commander of the deck? Let's say you wanted to build a separate Tivit deck. Let us know what you would do for that as well. Or maybe an Oscar Rubbish Clamor deck that you got to be... Uh, uh, I don't know, was it altered so that Oscar the Grouch is on it? Also, for those of you out there that are like, why didn't you put Cyclonic Rift in the deck? We will never put Cyclonic Rift in any of my decks. I'm no. just putting it out there. It also is a little bit expensive. It's taking up a huge part of your budget, too. Yeah. Yeah. Good on you. Douthy Void Walker is better. Okay, make sure you check out channelfireball.com slash command. That's the place to go get your magic cards, your sealed product, your singles, all that great stuff because you're going to want to take part either in drafting the new sets or you just want to buy some singles for the deck you're building. You're going to build this deck or something else. You're going to buy this precon. You're going to buy all the precons. All the precons. Go to channelfireball.com slash command or enter promo code command at checkout. That's how you support our show. But more importantly, you're getting cards for yourself at the exact same rate and you're helping out local game stores around the country. And big thanks to Ultra Pro for sponsoring the show. They make the products you see on game nights a lot of our products as well a lot of our products they've just been making quality products for the past decade plus i've been playing with them since i was like in fifth grade third grade my first top loaders were all ultra pro and i haven't changed because <laughs> there's no need to they're a great company go to your local game store pick up a new play mat or go to their online store and buy some stuff there they got tons of awesome yeah. products and they're always doing sales and stuff too on older stuff so you can always find a really great deal okay End step. We're talking about something cool outside the world of magic. Do you have anything, Ashley? Yes, I do. Oh my, what is it? Uh, so outside the world of magic, uh, veganism. Oh, it's veganism. Being vegan, vegan. Veganism, the vegetarianism. Vegan There's lots of different ways to change your eating habits. Yes. Uh, basically, over the, the beginning of the year, I changed from just normal eating whatever I used to eat mm -hmm. to eating vegan. And I've really, really enjoyed it, and I'm kind of happy I did it. Nice. Um, it all started with a documentary called The Game Changers. Yep, I've seen it. Everyone has heard of, I'm sure. It's really good. I, I really enjoyed the documentary. It's very convincing. I will say, documentaries in general, they're going to be a little bit biased. <laughs> but uh, So take things with grains of salt sometimes. Do but your own research. They are, they are documenting very real yes. people, however, in this yes. documentary. And as crazy as it is, their lives are very true. Yeah. Uh, one of them actually is Patrick Babauman. Uh, he is a retired strong man mm. and uh, just lifter of like the most heavy things. It's ridiculous. Uh, and he's vegan. A lot. It goes over a lot of people who are vegan uh, that are like power lifters. Mm. Uh, yeah, marathon yeah. hike runners. Those cr just insane athletes. Uh, incredible how much uh, they're accomplishing. It's nuts. Yeah, and it's just I'm not trying to like turn anyone vegan here. I'm just saying it, it's a really cool diet to explore. Like back in the day, I would never do it because what options are there, right? Like you oh, think of like of, what right. are you going to eat? What are you going to make? Um, 
what are you going to grab when you're running out the door late for work or something? Right. What if you need to get something really quickly and fast food's your only option? Right. What if you don't live near a grocery store that has that many vegan options? You know, so there's a lot of obviously complications to get in the way of changing your eating habits. But I will say the takeaway for me, we watched, my wife and I watched The Game Changers. We watched, the, there was that ocean documentary about the overfishing. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was a few sort of around that same time that all were talking about, you know, what is your impact on the world and, and what are you doing to your body too with the food yeah. that you eat? Uh, and we were trying to get pregnant at the time and we switched to a plant-based diet. So this isn't full vegan, isn't full vegetarian, but you're just eating a lot more veggies. And it's something that we have literally not stopped since. We oh, nice. now focus on always getting more vegetables than anything else. Uh, our stomachs love it. I get way more energy. I yeah. sleep better. There's so many different thing, parts of my life where I'm not like feeling sluggish. There's so many, When I was growing up, I would always eat fast food like crazy. And you just... It's like you're loading yourself with all this stuff and then you're just sort of simmering in this, oh, food I, coma. I'm just food coma, I don't want to do anything. And then that kind of carries over. So we found that actually eating more plants and stuff really helped us. Uh, I don't know if it directly contributed, but we did get pregnant and things did succeed. Uh, so that I think was just a part of a lot of different things and having our mentality shift about how we looked at our food and how we put things into our body yeah, really did make a big difference. So even if you don't want to ever be a vegan and you love your prime rib and your steaks still check out game changers yeah it's it's really cool yeah. and like even if you do like veggie tuesdays or something like there's yeah. different ways you can incorporate things in your life uh, again this is just what works for me i have more energy now i um just feel better there's a lot of things in animal protein and byproducts that can be inflammatory to the body and mm -hmm. so taking that out of the picture has been very beneficial, I will say. Yeah, and I'm assuming you're eating a lot less processed foods and stuff yeah. as well. So if you have the chance to even try it for a day, for a half a day, for a meal, try it, see what happens, you know, get more in tune with your body. So that's a great call out. Uh, happy to talk always about yes. ways to live your life better. But yeah, that's it. Cool. All right. Well, thanks so much, Ashlyn, for joining us here today. And of course, a big thanks to the team here at the Command Zone. Arthur Meadowcroft, Shauna Gillis, Damon Lenz, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Craig Blanchett, Ashlyn Rose, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Patrick Nan, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Walder, Grav Galati, Truck Ty, Jamie Block, Evan Limberger, and Mitch Trafford, and how's it? Josh Lee Kwai. Yes, Josh. Special <laughs> thanks to Jeffrey Palmer. He does the living card animations often that live behind us on set. Not this one, but he also does the animations that start our videos yes. on YouTube. You can find him on Twitter at Living Cards MTG. All right, everyone, uh, go get Obscura with it, and we hope to see you on the streets of New Capenna. We'll see you next time. Bye. Peace. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com. Or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs> <laughs>